Hello and welcome back to principle one, step five, where we are going to be identifying and making the rational choice of who your target audience is going to be. And that's exciting. Uh, and the question I want you to be thinking about in this step is who can you most effectively reach? And the word there is effectively. And um, you know, earlier we talked about kind of having the business hat on and having the relational hat on. Um, and so in this, I am going to encourage you to look at things in a little bit more of an analytical standpoint. I've kind of seen um, enough ministry to know that to a large degree, Christians love everyone and we want to reach everyone. Okay. And I love it. I love that that is our heart as Christian men and women, that we want to spread the gospel to everyone with no exceptions. Okay. And that's the relational side and inviting that kind of business side, that analytical side. Okay. It's impossible to get everyone and businesses know this. My product, if I, if I make uh, tires, okay, I'm not going to market to everyone because not everybody wants to buy tires. It's just how it is. Okay. Um, you know, if I make Christmas trees, there are a lot of people who don't want to buy Christmas trees. If I do a service, I'm a Christian digital marketing consultant and I do not market Christian digital marketing services to certain types of people. I don't do it to for-profit companies. There's a lot of people that I cannot reach with my services and that is okay because there is a specific type of person I am trying to reach that is very receptive. How you doing? And so the word, who can you most effectively reach? Uh, if you go into a group of people that we maybe we could have known have no interest in hearing what you can what you're going to say and you can talk till you're blue in the face and never at any point is one of them going to come to your church and we would all agree that's probably a waste of time there is a different group of people that you can go talk to and some of them will be receptive and they will come to your church and so the question is that of effectiveness kind of from an analytical standpoint from a business hat standpoint who can you most effectively reach? Okay. And I think Paul had a really good grasp of this sort of concept. Paul, I, I think is really advocating to his audience that is reading his letter to become all things to all people, to, to speak in such a way that it is effective with the people we're talking to. And so as you read the scripture below, I really encourage you to read it because it's, it's really interesting when you kind of look at it through um, the eyes of marketing and kind of think about it from that standpoint. But the first thing, well, not the first thing, in verse 21, it looks like he talks that he is under the law of Christ. And what that means for us is, firstly, we have to make a commitment to never change the, the gospel message or our behavior um, from a standpoint of like righteous behavior to appeal to our audience. Because if either of those things are something we do, then we have just undercut ourselves. And the reason we were doing it to start with doesn't mean anything anymore. So he says, firstly, he's under the law of Christ and he's going to act in such a way that he's not sacrificing his, mor his morals, his integrity, or his message. Okay. And so the second thing though, is he goes on to say, become all things to all people. Right. So he's saying, and again, the, the greater context of this passage is talking about, you know, do we have to partake in the Jewish food laws if we're under the new covenant? OK, so that's the that's the general context. But what he's saying is to the Jews and those who are under the food laws, even though I don't have to be under the food laws, I will conform to those laws so as not to make them stumble. So my message will be more appealing to them. And then he says to the Gentiles, I will conform to their way of doing things as well. Um, again, to the degree that it's, it's not going to impact my message. It's not going to impact uh, my convictions as a Christian, but I will change my behavior and my actions and the way that I'm doing things to make the people around me comfortable to resonate with them on a deep level. And then he goes on to say, so that I might win a few. Um, and that is effectiveness 101 right there. That is engaging your target audience 101 and it's, it's really encouraging to actually see that in scripture. And so what I want to encourage you with is this. If there are 10 people in front of you, or a, let's just say 100 people in front of you, okay? Paul says that I might win a few, okay? As a business person, I cannot win everybody. Every single pastor I'm going to talk to is not going to buy my business, is not going to buy this course. Um, every single person that you talk to is not going to come to your church. And every single person you talk to is not going to accept Christ. They didn't even accept Christ when Christ asked them to. 
Uh, and we see that with the rich young ruler. Um, and so what we have to know is we can't win every single person we talk to. And so the question then becomes, again, rationally, is how can I most effectively reach everyone? And what I would say to you from a marketing perspective is this, talking to everyone will effectively talk to no one. And I know that our heart relationally is to just get everybody because we, we love them all, but that's not going to happen. And so what we have to do is we have to actually say, who am I going to talk to on a very deep level? We got 100 people in the room, 65, 70, 75 people meet this specific kind of profile. They're all similar in these ways. Those are the people that I'm going to talk to. And those are the people that we're going to start attracting to your church. And so your message is highly specific and targeted and it hits the hearts of the people in the room every time because you're not just kind of talking to everyone, you're talking to you know, Jim, who's 31 years old, has two kids, is working a blue collar job and is struggling to make ends meet. How specific can we make our servants? How specific can we make the services in our church? If that's what we're doing, we can make them hyper specific and all of the gyms in the area are going to come to your church and you're going to have an incredible ministry with them because you're speaking to them on a level that they deeply care about. And like Paul says, you're going to win a few of them. So with that, uh, go ahead open worksheet five and start thinking critically, fill out that profile, come to decisions on who your target audience is. And I will see you in the very next video.